So this is the new Logitech G513 mechanical gaming keyboard. Now, for those of you who don't really keep track of Logitech's gaming peripherals, let me explain this new addition because they do have a lot of options for consumers to choose from. Remember the G413 that I looked at last year for $89? Well, the G513 is the exact same replica of the G413, except it comes with, you guessed it, RGB lighting, a new mechanical switch, and a few other features which we'll get to shortly. And if you're wondering about pricing, $150, guys. But is it really worth spending that much on a gaming keyboard these days? Let's find out right after this. The new OCZ TR200 from Toshiba is a great value SSD if you're considering upgrading a hard drive and get a nice boost in performance with cutting edge 3D flash memory and ultra reliable controller with built in power management. Available in different capacities, check it out below. Okay, so first up, build quality. It feels very similar to the G413. Essentially, they've laid a solid piece of brushed aluminum on top of the plastic chassis, which complements rigidity, so I wouldn't worry about long-term durability, although be mindful that the brushed aluminum texture can pick up dust quickly and it's a pain to clean at times. I'm typically not a fan of this texture. I would have preferred it sandblasted as it's smoother and easier to clean, but that's just my opinion. Logitech has also included a single USB 2.0 pass-through port at the back for plugging in any USB powered devices. This could be used for a wireless receiver for your gaming mouse or to charge your mobile devices or plug in external drives. I did wish if it was USB 3, but it looks like this port by itself requires more bandwidth to fully function, which is also why the cable is really thick and braided. I did have some trouble comfortably routing this on my desk, so do keep that in mind. Plus it's also non-removable. The layout is pretty straightforward. Remember, this isn't a TKL keyboard, but rather a full-size mechanical one. It certainly took me some time to get used to since my daily driver is the G Pro, but if you're coming from something like a standard membrane keyboard, this should feel like home. Not to mention, you are getting a huge upgrade in terms of build quality and features. There aren't any dedicated programmable buttons on the G513, just like the G413, but the user can program the function keys with their desired macros through Logitech's gaming software. The included memory foam wrist rest is a welcoming addition, and I absolutely loved my time typing and gaming with it. I really wish the G Pro had something like this, and as much as I prefer its compact nature, ergonomics is also something that I value, and the G513 certainly gets bonus points for that. The wrist rest is made out of leatherette material, it's soft, it's comfortable, it's also sweatproof and waterproof, but that's something that I have to validate in the long term. This doesn't attach to the keyboard, which is a good thing by the way, because you can reposition the rest to your comfort setting, uh, plus the bottom does come with adequate rubber feet, so it does stay stationary regardless. The bottom of the keyboard also features appropriate rubber feet to prevent unnecessary movement, and it also comes with angle adjustments. What's even more impressive is that they've carefully implemented cable routing points uh, for your headphones or your mouse so that it doesn't get in the way while you're in an intense gaming session. So kudos to Logitech for designing a well thought out keyboard, except for the lack of including uh, dedicated media play buttons. Now this may or may not be a deal breaker for some of you out there, but having tested multiple gaming keyboards, full size mechanical keyboards here in the studio, uh, I'm just disappointed that Logitech decided to eliminate that on the G513, especially at this price point. Uh, Corsair does it with most of their full-size mechanical keyboards, so I don't really know why they've decided to eliminate uh, dedicated media playback buttons. Uh, I would value them on a full-size keyboard, to be honest. Now, they have integrated those playback buttons within the function keys, and what's interesting is that if you use Logitech's gaming software, uh, you can inverse switch the function keys to those media playback buttons, so you don't have to hit the function key and then uh, change the volume or skip tracks. You can directly hit that button, and it'll do that functionality. The only thing is you'll lose that function key uh, as primary. So, for example, if I'm working with programs like After Effects and if I want to use F9 uh, to smooth out that keyframe, I would obviously have to hit, I'd have to remember to hit a function and then F9 and not F9 uh, instantly. So that's something to keep in mind, especially if you work with programs uh, that take advantage of function keys. Also, Logitech, what's up with this thread mount at the back? I was not able to find any info on that on your website, nor was I briefed on anything about it. My guess, potential future add-on accessories to complement the rest of your gaming peripherals or or something interesting. I don't know, I'm just speculating, but if you decide, if, we, if you end up picking up this keyboard and if you're wondering what that thread mount is for, um, I, I don't have an answer. 
RGB lighting has made its way into the G513 and it looks amazing. I really like what Logitech has done here with the lighting just like the G Pro and the rest of the keyboards. It doesn't spill across the frame unlike some other gaming keyboards and that's thanks to the Roma G switch design. The LED is dead centered within the housing which then results in uniform and consistent lighting across the board. It looks simple and minimalistic, and I'm sure most of you would agree with me on this, but regardless, I'd love to hear your thoughts on Logitech's lighting system in the comments. There are a variety of effects to take advantage of, like breathing, star effect, color cycle, color wave where you can adjust the speed and direction, there's also a keystroke effect, and finally ripple, which is a little bit on the fancier side and I don't see myself using that, but you may like it. This can be done through the driver software, but if you want on-the-fly customization, Logitech has implemented dedicated keys ranging from F5 to F8 that controls the effects, the direction, and the brightness, along with the G key to disable the Windows key. Nice touch. I should also mention that the G513 is LightSync compatible, uh, so if you do end up picking up the G560 gaming speakers featuring LightSync technology, uh, you can sync the lighting across this keyboard as well as the rest of the peripherals. Uh, you can take advantage of uh, effects, lighting effects like audio, visualizer, or screen sampler, or if you're in a game and if you want that lighting immersion, uh, this can definitely uh, implement or it can complement uh, your experience. Moving on to switches. Well, that's the new thing here. You see, if you own a Logitech gaming keyboard like the G Pro, the G413, heck, even the Orion Spark, you're probably aware of the Roma G switches they feature. It's custom designed by Logitech, and I'm used to it on my G Pro. With the introduction of the G513, Logitech has announced a new type of switch called the Roma G Linear. They've renamed the original switches from Roma G to Roma G Tactile, and the primary difference between these two switches is their feedback. So with these new linear switches, you're getting a more fluid and smoother keystroke experience compared to the tactile response you get with the originals. So there isn't that tactile bump anymore with these new linear switches. They still feature the same 1.5mm actuation distance with a total travel of 3.2mm and actuation force still remains at 45 grams. It took me a solid day to get comfortable with these new switches compared to the tactile ones found on the G Pro. And I certainly have mixed feelings about this. For one, I do miss the slight tactile feedback that I used to get with the tactile profiles. Uh, and it's also a lot more on the quieter side, so that could be an advantage for some of you out there. But most importantly, I've also noticed that I've been applying a lot more pressure than needed uh, for the key to actuate. And I think that's all part of the smoother and key, uh, the smoother keystroke experience you're gonna be getting uh, with these new switches. I did manage to compare these switches to Cherry MX Red because they do feature linear characteristics, uh, it's kind of like what Roma G Linear offers. And one of the differences that I did notice is that the liftoff force is a lot higher on Cherry MX Reds compared to Roma G Linear. So if you're looking for something with a higher liftoff force, uh, obviously uh, Cherry MX Reds is a better offering. And of course, you are gonna get that smoother, I think the actuation, the smoother keystroke, it's just a lot better uh, on MX Reds compared to uh, Roma G Linear. I'm just not fully comfortable using uh, this the G513 with these new switches. I'm still, I'm still so used to the tactile ones, and of course, I prefer that tactile feedback. So if I were you, I would try out these keyboards with the new switches at a local retail store like Best Buy or Micro Center, and then pull the trigger, uh, because like I said, uh, you can only get comfortable with a gaming keyboard once you've tried them and once you get, sort of get used to them as well. Uh, so yeah, that's what I would recommend. Try this out first, and of course, I think most keyboards are returnable within 30 days, so you can definitely give this a shot, and if you're not comfortable, uh, switch this up with the Roma G a Tactile and see if you're comfortable with that. And if you're not, then of course, Cherry MX, there are a variety of mechanical keyboards with Cherry MX offerings uh, that you can get to try out. Now, how do these new linear switches translate into gaming? Well, that once again ultimately depends on what you're looking for on a gaming keyboard. Here's what I can assure you. These switches are fast and very lighter to actuate, so finger fatigue is completely out of question. The liftoff force is also non-existent, as I mentioned above, and these keys were overall very quick to respond within movements uh, within a game, and I had a pretty good time gaming with the G513, although I'm still getting used to them. I should also mention that you can pick up the G513 with the original Aroma G tactile switches for the same price, which is awesome. And here's a sound test comparing uh, the linear switches to the tactile ones on my G Pro and uh, the MX Reds on my Corsair K63 wireless.
Lastly, just to go over the software, Logitech has always excelled in this department. The user is greeted with a physical overview of the keyboard. Here's where you can hit the function inverse toggle if you'd like to assign the integrated media playback buttons as primary, plus you can easily customize macro commands to the function keys through F12. Logitech has pre-programmed a handful of commands that users can take advantage of, which is awesome. You also have the option to create profiles as well as play around with lighting. Uh, here's where you can customize the lighting effects that I talked about earlier. And since this is a Logitech gaming peripheral, you can sync the RGB lighting across the rest of your Logitech peripherals, including the G560 speakers with LightSync. So to conclude, the G513 is an interesting addition to Logitech's existing uh, gaming keyboard lineup. For one, it costs $150, which is an expensive investment, especially if you're considering uh, buying a Logitech gaming keyboard. But if you're looking to spend the exact same money for something a little bit more unique, you can pick up the G613 by Logitech, which is a wireless mechanical keyboard, but you are gonna be losing on things like uh, RGB lighting, and of course the robust build quality, and uh, this superior wrist rest. I really can't get over this guy. I mean, it's so comfortable. I mean, in fact, I will be using this with my G Pro. I really don't care of how long it is or not, but I just love the fact that it's comfortable. And ergonomically, it's just, it's perfect. I, it's probably one of the main highlight or main selling features of the G513. Now the new Roamer G linear switches are not exactly for everyone out there because you are gonna be losing on that tactile feedback. And of course, the lift off force is basically non-existent on these new switches. It's more geared towards people who prefer smoother actuation, something that's fast, something that's quick. And that's where uh, something like the linear might come in as a better fit. And once again, I'd highly recommend trying these out before uh, pulling the trigger. That being said, this is a fantastic keyboard designed by Logitech. In fact, as I mentioned in the beginning of this video, this is basically the G413 with the addition of RGB lighting, a new mechanical switch, and of course, uh, the inclusion of this wrist rest. And that's about it. That's all you're paying for that extra premium. So would you actually spend that extra money uh, for those features over the G413? In fact, you can pick up the G413 for a lot cheaper or for a lot less than $89 right now. So let me know if you would rather pick that or this in the comments down below. And of course, I'd love to hear your thoughts on the G513. What do you guys think about it? Let me know in the comments. I'm Eber with Hardware Connects. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next one.